Hey, this is Kev. A long time ago, when Blender 2.8 first dropped, I made a tutorial on making wormholes. And it kind of got some traction and a lot of people liked it, but I'm starting to get questions that it's not working anymore. So I thought I'd make a follow-up video here in Blender 2.9.1, whatever, and show you guys how to change that. And in doing so, I think I can make a cooler wormhole too. So the first thing I'm going to do to make this wormhole, or warp tunnel, or whatever you want to call it, is we need to have something we need to have a tunnel. We need to have something, a path. So to do that, and I'm going to use this menu up here for new people, I'm going to hit add, curve, and I'm going to go to circle. Okay, there we go. So curve, circle. It says add Bezier circle, great. So radius here, I'm going to type in 50, and it makes it pretty huge, great. That's what I want. The next thing I'm going to need to do is attach the camera so that it follows the circle. Okay, that's really easy to do too. But you have to zero out the camera first or you're going to get the camera following the path at a weird angle and you're not going to like that. So to do that, you're just going to select the camera, then hit Alt G, okay, and then Alt R. And you'll see here that what that did is it takes item and zero it out. You could also type in zero all over the place here and that'll do the same thing. Okay, so then we have to attach this to the curve. That's pretty simple too. With the camera selected, we're simply going to go over here to Object Constraint Properties. Okay, object constraint, and I'm going to say follow path, and then target shall be Bezier circle. Okay, there's Bezier circle, there's Bezier circle, here it is in the list. Hit that, there you go. And once that's there, you, you can hit play and you won't see anything. So you have to hit animate path. Now you'll see it go around and around and around. Now, we also want to make it look ahead. Now I could always rotate this and make it look ahead. That's perfectly fine, but I like to use a target. So to do that, I'm going to add empty plane axis. Okay, it's just a non-rendering empty object goes right in the middle. And I'm going to do the same thing I did to the camera to this. So here I am, object constraint, follow path, target, Bezier circle, there it is. So now they're both going around. So now what I want to do is make this guy in front of the camera just a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to say the offset. Okay, negative, and push him just a little bit for a little bit up. Okay, just like that. And now we have to make the camera look at him. That's going to be our target for the camera. So I'm going to select the camera, and I'm going to say we're still in this object constraint thing, right? And I'm going to go to track two, and then I'm going to say target, empty, done. And if you set it up like this, you don't have to mess with any of these things and guess or anything. It's just going to work. So now we have this camera looking ahead, following this empty. That's what we want. Perfect. So now let's make the track a little bit more interesting. To do that, I can hit select the Bezier curve, hit tab, and you get these four handles. So you can select these, you can hit G, move them around, move them around, move it around, right, move it around. And you can add more because that's kind of boring too. That's not going to be very interesting. So I can hit A to select them all, then hit segments, subdivide. Okay, here we have more. So now I can go G, move this guy. I can go G, move this guy in. G, pull him. G, maybe pull him. And that's looking quite a bit better. Okay, so this guy's a little crazy. So you can take these handles here, right? G, move those around, just kind of smooth that out a little bit. All right, that's probably okay. So now if I hit tab again, close it out, and I hit play, you can see there they are. Okay, let me show you camera. There he goes. Now he's going really fast, so how to change that? Well, a really fast way to do it is just to simply select the Bezier circle, okay? Go here to the little uh, object data properties, go to path animation, and then what you see here is frames. You can change the frames to match your end too. So like 250, all right, that's probably pretty good. And now he's moving at a decent speed. And you can add even more keyframes if you want. You can say like 500, and as long as this matches this, so 500 here, now I have a decent speed, okay? That's gonna be way more interesting when we actually get into the animation of it. So there's our timeline, 500, moving at a nice speed, everything is cool. So now we can go ahead and build the tunnel. The tunnel is simple. All you have to do is select the Bezier circle, 
Okay. Go to geometry right here and then just say depth, increase the depth to like two something, whatever you get a tunnel. So now if I hit zero, look at that. I'm actually inside a tunnel. Now you're seeing this like jerkiness, right? You don't want this jerk. No one likes jerk. No one likes jerkiness, right? So let's <laughs> take this guy and what we can do, Bezier circle, and we'll take this ref resolution preview, turn that up to like 32. And you see that if you scroll ahead a little bit, you see we're getting this faceting here. You can change the resolution of the bevel here to like 16. And now you get a nice smooth tunnel. You get nice smooth motion. And there you go. Right. So I also did this in this uh, Hawkins tunnel system tutorial from Stranger Things. And that was kind of cool, too. So now let's make the actual shader because that's what you're here for anyway. Right. What I'll do is I'll just drag this up. And I'll just change this to shader editor because I want to have, if I want to like animate any of the properties in here, I like having the timeline on here. So I don't really use this all that much. I just like this. And then I'll turn on EV over here too. So we can see what's going on. So now I'm just going to go ahead and hit principled shader. So I'll hit new and it's principled shader. Okay. So I give this a new principled shader and I need to give it a texture so that it looks interesting. So I'm going to hit principal shader or principal BD principal BSDF. Okay. And I'm going to hit control T. So for control T to work, you need to have node wrangler installed. So if you go up here, like edit preferences, add ons and enable node wrangler, this, this is there. Okay. 3000 other videos show you how to do that too. So image texture, I hit that and I hit shift S to change it. And let's see, I'm going to use a Musgrave texture. And it's not showing up yet. So I'm going to take that from base color and I'm going to throw that for now into, into alpha. Okay. That's going to control the alpha. And then I'm going to take emission and pump it up a bit. And there is our shader on our tunnel, but it's not looking like we want. So for this to look better, I'm going to take UV, I'm going to change this to object into vector. And now it looks like a bunch of noise. So you just go here to Musgrave and take the scale down a bit. And you're getting something that looks kind of more like the nebula type look that I want. All right. And it's pretty harsh right now, but we're going to, we're going to change that in a minute. All right. So I can kind of get this like cool effect. And you see here now we're in the tunnel and we're going through. Great. So that's kind of a good basis. So now what we'll do is we're going to make this transparent. So to do that, okay, here's, here's where it really differs. There used to be like this additive thing. And you know, in, in the last video I did this whole additive and I'm, this is all the questions I'm getting. So all you have to do now it's handled by, okay. And EV is this, this transparency is now handled here, but all you have to do is go here to material properties. Okay. And go all the way down and see where it says blend mode change from opaque to alpha blend. And there you go. Now you're getting a nice blend. So if I go back inside the tunnel, okay, um, I'm still here. Alpha is controlled by this. You can see that we're not getting transparency a little bit yet. We're getting a little bit. Okay. So if I back it up here, you can see there's a little bit of transparency, but what we want to do too, is we don't want to rely on the Musgrave texture alone to control the alpha. So I'm going to put a color ramp in here and that's going to give us more control and give us a nicer result. So I'm going to hit shift a converter color ramp. And there we go. So now we get a nice, much better fall off. This is all transparent. Okay. I don't get the harsh blacks anymore. And there we go. So now if I take base color here and I turn that all the way down, I can control the look and the shader here with the emission. Okay. Because it's kind of a light effect that we want. So I'll find a cool, you know, nice, cool, uh, nice, cool hue. And there we go. So I'm starting to get this warp tunnel. Now, if you want to see some glowing in things, cause we're in EV and we can use that. I can turn on bloom if I want and I can pump it up to like 16 and there we go. So now I'm getting that light effect and it's looking pretty decent. Okay. Pretty decent start. I like that. Not bad. All right. Still a little jerky, but whatever. So what else can we do? What else can we do? Well, I can say that this right here shall be a uh, warp shader. Oh, one. And now if I want to add more to this, okay, I want more colors. I want more. I can actually layer this on top and 
being that we changed the alpha here and we did we set it all up so that you can see through it this is where a lot of people are having trouble like duplicating this and not being able to see the second tunnel so here's where you do this i can just select this go here hit shift d and then enter immediately because you don't want to move it you just want it to be exactly on top and then you're just going to go here to this object data properties and you're going to just change the depth a little bit more and now we start getting a different layer and here I can actually, being that we're selecting this guy, I can say new, so warp shader, oh, well, one, whatever. And I can go ahead and change the color here to say like an orange. All right? Maybe something darker, more interesting. So I go in here now, and that's even looking, that's looking even more interesting. Right? Not bad, right? So, okay, cool. We can also go ahead and say we want to do more. So I can go ahead and duplicate this again. So I go here, go in here, hit Shift D, Enter. And now I can take this depth, pull it up a little bit more, and I can actually go ahead, create a different shader, a new shader here. And this guy, I'm going to create stars. So to do that, I'm just going to go to white. And now I'm going to turn down the scale a bit. And now I can change because I have this color ramp controlling. I can take the black, pull them in, and now I kind of get stars. And I can also go ahead and play with the scale. And I can get whatever, whatever I want. So I'm just going to go back hit one. That's fine. Zero. And now I have stars, nebula, you know, warp tunnel effect. Now, the real cool trick here to get a, a much nicer looking effect is to change the camera. Then you go to camera and change it from focal length here, change that down to something pretty wide. All right, so like, I don't know, like eight millimeters or something, right? Now you're getting a much nicer effect. And if I go ahead and I turn on motion blur for Eevee, okay, and I say, instead of shutter 50, I go to shutter one. If I hit render now, render image, Watch this. I start getting a much nicer, and uh, you can see it's it's a bit better, but we're going to change it and make it even nicer. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take steps here, and the more steps you give it, the better it's going to look. It's going to take a little bit longer to render, but it's going to look better. So steps here, I'll say like um, 32, and if I hit render again, there we go. We're getting a much nicer, and you can still see some stepping in here, but you can smooth that out even more if you want. So you can go uh, steps like 128 even, and it's going to take longer to render, but you'll see that the result is going to be much smoother. Okay. There's more steps. It looks smoother. It looks nicer. Okay. So as you're going through this, you can play around and you don't have to have shutter speed at one, but, uh, you can play around and I'm kind of liking that. So I'm going to leave it. Now we can also go ahead and play around with some of these shaders again. So for example, uh, let me see here. This is this is the orange one. So we can go ahead and we can kind of start playing around with the scale. Okay. And if I'm in here, we can play with the scale on the X or the Y and we can give it, get more of that, you know, cool nebulous, nebulae, nebula, 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 nebula look. And it'll be pretty interesting, right? There we go. Okay. So now I hit render here. Check this out. This is going to look a bit better. There we go. Okay, so we're getting like more nebula. We're seeing more of this. It's more glowy. It's kind of cool, right? I dig that. And then what we can also do is we can go ahead and we can add like a, a light in here. And that's going to really kind of make this pop. So to do that, let's go back to frame zero. And here is our thing. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do the same thing we did before. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add. Okay, I'm going to say light, and I'll just say point light. It goes right into the middle. And what I'll say is for point light, okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go to object constraints, and I'm going to say follow path, Bezier circle. It doesn't matter which one because they're all on top of each other. And there we go. And then I can offset this, just like I did the other stuff, and put it in front of it. So there it is. And now if I turn it up a bit, right? We're getting white. So as we go through, 
Ooh, there we go. We're getting that effect. And you don't have to use white. Like that's kind of, that's kind of, could be even kind of obnoxious, right? But you can use like other colors, right? Say like, like purple or, you know, maybe like, yeah, like that's kind of cool. Something like that. All right, there we go. And now we're getting like an even cooler effect, all right? A better effect. So we find a good, good, uh, let's see, probably that looks pretty cool there. So that looks pretty good there. Render, let's see what this looks like. Pretty good. And I'll probably even take that down. Probably don't need it to be that hot. And there we go, we're kind of flying through space and we're getting a wormhole effect. And the cool thing is you can always go back here into these shaders and you can go ahead and you can increase the scale. You can add more of this like nebula type effect or less, you know, it's totally, totally up to you. All right, you're like, it's like Bob Ross in this freaking blender world here. And you can go ahead and really go ahead and change things and make the effect yours. And you can add as many tunnels as you want, as many, you know, different Bezier curves as you want and really build this out and make something really interesting. So to go ahead and render this out, it's pretty simple. All right, you just go up here to uh, object output properties. Okay, tell it where you want to save it. Okay, in my case, I just said tunnel. You just call it like warp tunnel dot mp4 if you just want an mp4 i usually write out exr files but this is a tutorial so i'll just say you know go ahead change file format to ffmpeg video change encoding to h264 in mp4 on windows that's usually pretty good 24 frames a second pretty good one through 500 i'm digging that all right render render animation and you wait and in the end you get this and it's really interesting and fun, and hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, hit like, subscribe, share it. This file will be up on my Patreon if you want to hang out there and join and whatever and take it and play with it and have fun. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.